Okay, so far we've been looking at just the frequencies, right? So we have the medals data where you had for each country the number of medals given and then you plotted, plotted that. Okay. And then there was uh, another example where the TIPS data, then we counted how many, uh, you know, how many days are there, how many Sundays are there, how many Tuesdays, are, how many um, Thursdays are there, and so on. So it was just a count. So either the actual numbers, or we did a count, and we plotted the frequency. But bar charts can also be used to, uh, well, okay, so that's what the frequency. So, so far, we've been doing only the actual numbers, and if we want the count, how many are there in each, um, each value, then we have to first create an object that looks like the plots that we've made so far. Like, so gold medal for each country, how many, right? So that kind of a frequency count must be first created. And then we can plot it, okay? So if you want for time, that is dinner, uh, dinner and lunch. Okay, so those are the two possible values for time. And we want a frequency-based bar chart for that. How many dinner and how many lunch. Okay. But the data does not actually already have that number. We don't know how many are dinner and how many are lunch. Like in the case of the medals. In the medals, we already had that. How many for USA, how many for UK, how many for France, how many for China, and all that was already there. Now we don't have how many for dinner and how many for, for lunch, so we have to first create that. So let's go ahead and read the data in, and then we use the value counts and capture that value counts in an object. So here, well, actually, let's just print the value counts. And you see so the index here is the distinct values of time. And then we have the count. Now, this one looks like that medals data. right? So we can take that time count and use the time count dot index as your x-axis, and the time count itself as the bars. Okay. So that's what <coughs> we have done here. See, we create a figure and an axis. Since there is only one plot, we can just do them both in one line. And then the bar chart for the index, so index is dinner and lunch. And then the time count, that's the height, okay? And then we have a title. Now, I don't know, have we, did we do the uh, value labels last time? No? Okay, the value label sometimes is very helpful to make the chart readable. So we can even suppress this. We, you know, we can get rid of the y-axis and put the frequency count right on top of the chart. So that makes the, you know, less cluttered bar chart with the information straight on the bars themselves. So, uh, and there is an object called containers. Okay. And containers has several things stored in it. The very first item that container stores is the height of the, of the bar. So we can access the very first item, display that. So that's what we have done here. So AX bar label is the function. So that is the label for the bar. And then the value comes from this. And where to put that label, okay, is here. The rest of it defines where to put it. Okay. So right now it is at the edge, edge meaning at the top. Now, padding here is, do you need any extra spacing between the top of the bar 
Okay? And the number. Okay. And, and the number, right? So that's the, that's the padding. And size is, of course, the, the font size of, uh, of the number. So say, for example, if I make it 20, then you see that the uh, blank space between the top edge and the number is increased. And then we can use that. If you use a negative number, then you see that it will go inside. Okay. Sometimes we may want to put, you know, want to make it, you know, if you want a more concise um, chart, we can put a negative number that will take it inside. And edge, um, again, let me put this back to, suppose if it is zero, then that's what it will look like. Then the label edge, there is uh, other options are, I think, middle. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the other options are. You'll have to search for it, and then you'll see what the other options are. And size, of course, is the size. And then uh, uh, we can set the Y limit. Okay, so if you don't set the Y limit, sometimes what will happen is this uh, top of the figure and the value label may, you know, may, you know, the, the value label may bump into the top line. And that may make the chart look kind of not nice. So we can increase the Y bar limit like that, so then that will that will put some extra space, okay, on top of the value label up to the top of the figure boundary. Okay. Bar chart with relative frequency. Suppose we want relative frequency instead of frequency. Okay, sometimes that's used. So it's the same thing except that you have to now. Take your value counts. So we have the value counts, right? 176 and 68. We have to divide each of these by the sum of these two. So 176 divided by the sum of these two. And the 68 divided by the sum of these two will give you the proportion. And then if you multiply by 100, then it will convert that into a percentage, which is what I have done here. Okay. Instead of Plotting time count, okay, we plot time count divided by sum of time count, right, times 100, okay. Then when we do that, then we have to specify that we want the format to be percentage when we put the, otherwise it will just simply have 72.13. There won't be a percentage sign at the end. So to put this percentage sign at the end, we use the FMT parameter. Okay. So this is another. You know, don't don't worry about this. Um, this is what I don't know why I didn't delete this. But anyway, so this format says okay, four digits, two decimal places, right, and then a percentage sign. So the first percentage sign says okay, what follows is the format. So. The first percentage sign goes up to here. So that's one part of the format. And then the second percentage sign starts the second format. So that's just a text percentage sign. So we can put something else if you like. So instead of that second percentage sign, if I put an ampersand sign, well, ampersand sign is a special character, I guess. So, say dollar sign. Well, not enough arguments for string. Okay, so there is something wrong. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with that now. So, we'll put a percentage sign. Okay. All right. So. Okay. 
to create a well formatted bar chart for the day column. Okay, so it's the same thing. We have to first create a count for the day, like we have here for dinner and lunch. We have to do this for, for the day. And then use that frequency distribution to make the plot. Right? So the first one is first first we have to create um, for the day, okay. Um, mixing up here. Okay, day, uh, let's call it day count equal to um, tips df day value count, right? And then day count. So that gives us the um, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, Friday in alphabetical order. You see that it is in alphabetical order. It is not in the weekday order. Right? Well, it's actually, sorry, it's not. So. Okay, so value counts. And then we plot that. So we have figure AX equal to plot sub plots. Okay. <clears throat> then do a Figure size say fifteen by ten and A X and we want a bar chart. Okay, so we want day count dot index as the x axis and day count as the value. Okay. So now we have the uh, the bar chart, and then of course you'll have to do the formatting. Okay. So let's uh, do the formatting this time. I'm, I'm going to skip the formatting um, from the next uh, the next time onwards because it's the same. You do you do it the same way. Ax title. I mean ax dot set. Okay. You can if you use ax dot set. We can set the title for all three, the title, uh, the x-axis, and the y-axis. So set title equal to uh, diners by day, right? And then x-label equal to day. And Y label equal to count. Okay, so that's going to do those two, uh, th those three things. Count, all right, and one 
value labels, then we can say ax dot value label is given by bar label. Okay, bar label will print the value labels. The value labels is going to come from the container object, right? That's from ax. Okay, so ax is where we are. We have done the bar chart. So ax container containers. Okay, the very first one will have the height of the bar. And then we can say, well, if, you, if you just leave it like that, then you will have the um, the value labels. And then we can do further formatting in terms of font size and, and so on. Okay. And if you want to change the while limit, sure, we can say ax dot uh, set while limit while lim okay zero to I don't know ninety or one hundred something like that okay 